course and landed in the market place uh, near the border with Turkey in the northern Syrian uh, Kyoto uh, News reported reporting a Western diplomatic source. Military officials who blocked the area to uh, or blocked access to the area to recover what was left of the missile told residents there had been a gas explosion. More than 60 people were injured, the news service reported, killing 20. A Mideastern uh, military source said a problem with the guidance system caused both missiles to go astray. Isn't it interesting that these enemies of Israel are trying their best to get a guided missile working so that they can target Jewish areas? Well, evidently, they're having a few problems. They sound like, uh, you know, some of the things that happened in Russia back in their early days and even in the United States when some of our missiles blew up on the pad. But this one, it's... It's a disaster waiting to happen. You know, the Bible says Damascus is going to be destroyed. Maybe, just maybe, it'll be by one of their own missiles. Here's Israel Today, a news article. A small Palestinian group that challenged Hamas's rule in the Gaza Strip over the weekend has been defeated following street battles that left 24 people dead. Did you hear about that on the nightly news? Happened this past weekend in Gaza, infighting between two Palestinian groups. One, of course, had its links with Al-Qaeda and the other Hamas. So there was a fight between Al-Qaeda and Hamas over control of the Gaza Strip area. And 24 people were left dead, including several Hamas police officers And the two leaders of the nascent Jung Ansar Allah are soldiers of the partisans of Allah. During a Friday sermon in the south of Gaza, the leaders of Jung Ansar Allah declared Gaza to be an Islamic emirate in a way similar to what Al-Qaeda leaders have done in other countries. The group's followers then attacked the Hamas, Hamas forces but were eventually defeated. Officials associated with the group later denied any direct ties to Al-Qaeda, though ideological and tactical similarities remain. And while this one incident is now likely over, Israeli and Palestinian experts alike uh, are warning that it highlights Gaza's further descent into a state similar to what existed in Afghanistan prior to the American-led invasion. In, In short, Gaza has become an incubator for the most violent of Islamic terrorist organizations. Here's another one. Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, has now promised to put a freeze on Jewish construction, and the settlers are furious. This comes from Israel Today, Headline News, Israel's largest daily newspaper, uh, Yediot Aronot, reported on Tuesday that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Ehud Barak have reached an agreement to halt all Jewish construction in Judea, Samaria, and the eastern half of Jerusalem in compliance with the demands of U.S. President Barack Obama. Let me tell you something. Listen carefully. We are now approaching the hurricane season. We have proof documented in two books. One is called Eye to Eye, and, and as America has done to Israel, the other book, that every time our country makes unrighteous demands on Israel and we put the heavy boot upon Israel God sends disasters to America do you remember when Katrina came to New Orleans well the just a couple of days before I think within 48 hours before uh, we had demanded that that the Israelis um, abandon uh, Gush uh, Gush Atif I believe it was anyway it was on the Mediterranean coast down near the Gaza area and they, dis, uh, they, they took 10,000 I think it was Jews and dispossessed them of their homes and some of them are still living in rented buildings today rented homes today because the government has never given them uh, the money for 
the value of their property. And so uh, when we made Israel dispossess people along the coastline, it seemed that God dispossessed a lot of our people along our coastline too. Hey, if you don't want to believe that, fine. You just watch the hurricane season after stuff like this goes on. You just see if God doesn't punish America for, because God promised Abraham, I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those who curse you. So months later, it says here, the decision sparked immediate outrage among the right wing Israelis who said the move was reminiscent of Netanyahu's ideological collapse during his first term as prime minister in 1996. Then, just as during his current term, Netanyahu entered the office vowing never to give up Israel's right to the land and not to make any serious concessions until the Palestinians reciprocated previous concessions. Months later, Netanyahu was strong-armed again by then-President Bill Clinton into surrendering nearly all of the ancient Judean city of Hebron. The decision to halt Jewish construction on the eastern side of Jerusalem came as a particular surprise to those who believed Netanyahu was the only candidate that would preserve the capital's under, uh, unity under Israeli control. Right-wing Israeli leaders said that if Netanyahu continues with the policies of his rival, Kadima leader Zippy Livni, there will be no reason to keep him in office, and he will find himself facing a no-confidence vote, just as he did during his first term. And then, here's a sad note, some Arab youth, teenagers, uh, here called thugs, a gang of young Arab thugs beat a 52-year-old Jewish man to death while he and his family were visiting a beach in northern Tel Aviv over this past weekend. As the Arabs passed by the man and his family, they reportedly made a crude remark to the man's daughter. When the man responded to the remark with anger, the Arabs began attacking the family. While the daughter and mother f fled the scene and contacted police, the young men beat the father to death. Police are still investigating whether the man died from the blows inflicted on him or if the Arab man drowned him in, a nearby, in the nearby sea. The assailants all fled the scene and uh, hid in a nearby forest. But two young Jewish girls who had been accompanying the Arabs later contacted the police to let them know exactly what happened and to lead them to their Arab companions. One of the girls later told reporters that she pleaded with the Arab friends to stop beating the men, but they wouldn't listen. The Arab men and two, young, uh, two Jewish girls have been taken into custody, and many are likely to face life in prison. The Arabs were all from the central town of Jaljulia. Young men from the village often date Jewish girls from nearby towns. All of the locals from Jaljulia were interviewed in the Israeli media, expressed disgust over the crime, and even some suggested that life in prison would be too good for the perpetrators. Many of the older residents lamented that the younger generation in Jajulia and other young or Israelis, Arabs uh, communities are increasingly turning to violence, either as a result of alcoholism or drug use or the adherence, adherence to radical Islam. Amazing, isn't it? Well, it's sad that people cannot be safe. America's getting that way. Oh, I'm not saying it's, you know, an ideological battle between Arabs and Jews or anything like that. It's just that America, oh my, the land of the free and the home of the brave. We used to could leave our doors unlocked, our cars unlocked. Um... Our kids could run up and down the streets playing with the neighbor kids. Not so today. America is finding itself an armed fortress. Well, we just need to pray that the Lord will come soon. Because I want you to know when Jesus comes, he's going to establish a kingdom. And you know what? It's going to be utopia. That wonderful age that men have been looking for for 6,000 years. And some have been trying to establish for 6,000 years unsuccessfully. When Jesus comes, it will be done. 
all praise and glory to him. For you see, he is our creator. I'm J.R. Church. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.